Okay, guys, today we're gonna be heading to Ruka's Beach. Uh, there's a bunch of water levels here, but they're all, like, above ground water levels with a lot of platforming, so I'm not gonna fast forward any of them. But I just want you to take in the nice, calming atmosphere today. Today, we're gonna be relaxing on the beach while listening to this lovely mashup of songs from Mario 1, 2, and 3. The overworld theme from 2, the overworld theme from 1, and I think the ending theme from 3. Marvel and the fantastic sunset, Marvel and the palm trees, and all the two yeah, all the Koopas wearing their turtle sunglasses. Turtle sunglasses, brand new invention, better than Oakley's. Marvel as we burn crabs to death with our fireballs, and as we calmly walk past all the palm trees and go in this black pipe. This is this room here is just such a stark contrast to like the calming beach area. You're just like, oh, it's a purple room, but it's also not throwing any enemies at you. It's just like super calm, and I don't know. Like this is a side path, which I find weird because they said most of the side paths are going to be harder than the main levels. Keep in mind uh, that bullet level from like way beginning. That was a side path. That was somewhat difficult, and this is really kind of calm. The only thing that freaks you out is the fact that we're running out of time right now. If I had gone back earlier for that red coin, I would probably be cutting the time a little bit close. So we're just gonna run through here, and they have like the little mini... Oh, I can't remember the name of these enemies. I just call them the spiny things that I really hate, because I hated water levels in the first game, in the original Smart World. But I, I've been realizing, thinking about it more and more in my comments in the other videos, the atmosphere in World 2 is a lot better than World 1. World 1 seems like a lot more generic in the sense that it's, you know, it's, it's your generic platform game. Oh, hey, it's a grassy field. Hey, we're gonna go jump on some Goombas, kill some turtles, and jump through a field goal. But World 2, they put, like, a lot more atmosphere ideas into it. Mind you, it, it's still not super challenging. Although the, the castle coming up here now is actually a very nice touch. This is Sky Tower. Sky Tower being not all that tall, because you'll see the top of it here once I stop slipping around constantly. Or not. Stupid. There we go. So, if you jump over this building... Not there, though. If you jump over this building, you'll find a little secret on the other side. It's, oh my god. If you jump over this building... Thank you. If you jump over this building, you'll find... Uh, two flyer flowers, one up, and a little note block saying, oh hey, you're clever for figuring out what that can do. Because, you know, we needed two more one-ups when we were at 29. Now, the Flint Hearth secret they're referring to in that box, that's the one I did that majestic swan jump with in the third episode, where I, you actually weren't supposed to do that, and <laughs> you were supposed to use the spring more that we just found. The spring more basically is the way to get all the secrets. I don't know what other items they're planning for later mushroom houses, but for now, it's... I don't know, I think they got all their bases covered. Maybe if they could get, like, a star you can carry around, or... That would just make it too easy then. This is one of the more challenging levels of World 2. Like, I know that they say the main focus of the game is going to be easy, and I can't fault them for that. It's just... Sometimes it seems a little bland. This is one of the levels that I think that they actually got it right. This is, like, this is probably my favorite level, actually, now that I think about it. It's got, uh, the only thing that I don't like is that it drags on a little too long, and it has little surprise attacks like that, but I mean, can't really fault them for it otherwise. It's, it's a side path. It actually has, like, a decent challenge. A little bit harder than, say, Mario World was at this point, but still, it's, it's solid. It actually tries to hurt you. Unlike all the other ones, where you could literally just keep hitting the A button, and you could probably get through it. Uh, I haven't tried this, personally, but I'd like someone else to, if you don't mind. See if you can get through all of TKO by just hitting the A button, and how many times you'll get hit. Thinking, looking back at the other levels, and they may be a little simplistic, but I think you can get through most of the levels, if not all of them, if you just mash the A button. Like, you might not get hurt, You'll, you can jump on pretty much any enemy. I don't think there's any enemy in this game you can't A-jump on so far. Spin jump, whatever. 
I also love the fact that they threw those chompers back in. Chain chomps, good, good classic enemy. Just somehow floating in the air constantly. They all seem to go almost perfectly horizontal, and I guess that's just they can't go too low. I don't know if that's just the way they were programmed. I don't even know who programmed the uh, these versions of them, because I don't think they're based on the Mario 3 ones. Although, this level does have a lot of Mario 3 throwbacks, including Happy Clouds. Although, those are in Mario World as well, so my points move. But these enemies, the Buzzy Beetles, I don't remember there being blue ones. Red ones always flew straight up, and in the New Super Mario Bros. Wii, they introduced the giant ones, which slowly float down, but I've never seen blue ones in any of them, so... New enemy type right here, folks. See, I just... Like, look at how many enemies they're just throwing at you. If you're going too fast, this is... This is probably the first level that'll actually punish you for going too fast in the game. Puzzle levels notwithstanding, of course. This whole level is basically using a lot of Super Mario 3 pieces. Like, you got the uh, checkerboard floor, you've got those rotating potobos. I think that's what they were called, unless the fire guys. You got the classic thwomps and the crack thwomps. And they got the doors for Mario 2. I love those circular things. Now I don't love them so much. Okay, so there's a secret up this way, it leads to another star piece, but we're going to cover that in the last video. Now this is a cool thing too here. This basically reminds me of Kid Icarus, where if you jump on the left, you pop up on the right. Now I know there's also levels in Super Mario 3 that use this, I think uh, World 7 was pretty infamous for all the pipe mazes. Going back to pipe mazes, of course. But I, it's, it's cool in here, it's a little jarring though. Because if you've seen some of the characters jump on the left, then they kind of magically appear on the right. There's a little dead space where you can't really land there. Just watch. You'll see there's just like a little zone where you can't physically be in, because you'll just automatically teleport to the other side. Now, I think that's just a limitation in Lunar Magic and uh, other programming stuff, because you're not actually supposed to be able to do this, period. Brilliant. See, see that? That's... <laughs> That's the only time it'll actually screw you up, is if you do something stupid like that. I, th I really do think, though, this is probably my favorite level out of the whole game. They do do some cooler stuff in other levels, although the wraparound, like, even if it is not original anymore, I'm sure there's other games that have done it, like, even, even the Destroy Castle idea, that has been done by other games. Uh, I can't think of any major ROM hacks that I've played that do it, but I know that there's a bunch of big ones that have done it well before TKO did. So it's not new, it's just it's implemented in a pretty cool way, though. And now for everyone's fiercest and most hated enemy, Boom Boom from Mario 3. I told you this level's just using everything from Mario 3, man. And he's dead. Fantastic. Alright, now we're going to be heading off to Notori's Island. Now, I know a lot of you are expecting some crazy Toho reference with like a million bullets and everyone, everything dying. Prepare to be completely disappointed. It's just another generic water level. It's got no real Toho reference besides the name, and Despari has said that she put the name in there because she asked a friend, and apparently that friend referenced a Toho character because they really like Toho. I don't think I said Toho enough that sentence. Toho Toho. There's a lot of rain in this level. I guess you can make a bullet rain reference, but I'd rather not. So, I'm just gonna say this is... Yeah, the name will just throw you off if you're into that kind of game. Because it's still fairly simple. And it's also partial water swimming, so it's somewhat slower pace. It's just not as bad as the full-blown water levels. The rain I also have a problem with. It does try to be atmospheric, and it does succeed in, in, a, in a way, because the lightning flashes and everything makes it seem like there's a huge storm. 
The problem is, if your computer's not very good, you're actually going to start lagging at that point. I don't know how well you can pick it up in the video, but I know that when I was playing through this, my computer was actually lagging really bad in just this one area. Everything else was fine, but it was just... When there was all the rain on there and lightning, it just chugged. Like, frame rate ate it. Now a segue, where apparently we're underground now, we're going under the island. We're just collecting a lot of coins, and there's just an array of springboards here. I don't know why they set up so many, I think it was just to be crazy overkill. If you can springboard drop, like if you throw a springboard and then jump on it in midair, you can catch all those coins.